Welcome back students. Now in this section we will go further with the carbohydrate metabolism MCQs related to that. So let us look at the next MCQ. The rapaport Lubering cycle PPG shunt is increased means the shunt pathway is increased in the following conditions except hypoxia, altitude or high altitude, fetal circulation to prevent accumulation of ATP in RBC to prevent unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin. Did you get the answer? Yes. The answer is to prevent unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin is a wrong answer. So otherwise, the, all the rest of them are true. So this is the except question. So look at it. Why it is? A, what is the function of rapaport lubering cycle? BPG shunt is to produce 2,3 BPG. So what does 2,3 BPG do? It is having 2,3 BPG bisphosphoglycerate. The name itself tells you that it is having a lot of negative charges because of the phosphate and the glycerate. So what will happen? It will go and bind to the beta chains of the hemoglobin and it will stabilize the deoxy state of hemoglobin and help in unloading it brings about a conformational change it has got a small pocket between the beta chains it will go and bind there the beta chains have got a lot of uh, positive residue uh, residues amino acid residues like lysine histidine arginine all these positive amino acid residues will have a electrostatic bond formation with 2,3 ppg minute it forms a bond it stabilizes the deoxy state and it will help in the removal of unloading of oxygen. So why is it increased? It is increased formation of 2,3 ppg is seen in hypoxia. Yes, it is seen because in hypoxia we need to deliver oxygen to the tissues. So whenever the oxygen levels are low, 2,3 ppg levels will increase. This is increasing at the cost of ATP. Remember, minute we go for the 2,3 ppg shunt, one ATP production in the RBC decreases. But still the RBCs are going to do this. Why? Because oxygen delivery is more important rather than forming ATP when comparatively. ATP it does require but even at the cost of ATP it is ready to go for the shunt pathway so that it can unload oxygen. High altitude again the oxygen levels are lower so 2-3 BPG shunt is going to take place. Fetal circulation. Why? Remember that alpha and gamma are present in hemoglobin F and for the tra transport of unloading of the oxygen from the in the placenta from the mother to the fetus it is essential that it should take place so more than fetal circulation i could call it as placental circulation rather than fetal circulation so in this case promote the unloading of oxygen from the mother hemoglobin to the fetal hemoglobin the it will be increased to 3 ppg formation at the placental level to prevent accumulation of atp in rbc so will it be increased to prevent accumulation actually in it way it can take place yes it does this is a accept question so whenever the id this is another mechanism by which the rbcs are preventing an overload of atp so if the atp concentration keeps on increasing this shunt pathway will take place to prevent this accumulation of extra atp one atp is decreased it is at the cost of atp that 2-3 bpg shunt is taking place one substrate level phosphorylation reaction is lost when this shunt takes this will be the wrong answer the rest all things will be the truth uh, true answers let us go to the next question lactic acidosis is seen in all of the following conditions except myocardial infarction hemorrhage hypoxia cancer convalescence where is it seen in all of these except let us see did you get the answer it is convalescence now what is happening in convalescence lactic acidosis why we is seen in all of them except convalescence why uh, convalescence has got nothing to do with lactic acidosis when is lactic acidosis formed it is formed during anaerobic metabolism so myocardial infarction hypoxia anaerobic metabolism lact pyruvate is converted to lactate hemorrhage again there is a loss of hypoxia anaerobic condition 
pyruvate is converted to lactate hypoxia cancer yes the cancer cells are multiplying so much that it may lead to it may lead to lactic acidosis pyruvate is convert more formation of pyruvate to lactate the blood supply to the cancer tissue will not be sufficient so the cancer tissue is going to metabolize glucose in a different manner and it will convert glucose to more to lactate and it will lead to lactic acidosis the carbohydrate employed in the biosynthesis of nucleic acid is made in which of the following pathways you have glycolysis gluconeogenesis pentose phosphate pathway urea cycle citric acid cycle so in which of the following pathways is the carbohydrate employed in the biosynthesis of nucleic acid is made where so which carbohydrate is required for nucleic acid synthesis which carb which pathway maybe it all comes from it all comes from glucose so which pathway if you have answered pentose phosphate pathway then you have got it right why hmp shunt or the pentose phosphate now you have got a clue here pentoses are required for the synthesis of nucleic acid like dna or rna more than nucleic acid it is the de novo synthesis of purine nucleotides de novo synthesis of purine nucleotides requires ribose 5 phosphate and from where did ribose 5 phosphate come it came from the hmp shunt hexose monophosphate shunt so depending upon the need of the cell the uh, glucose will be diverted into hmp shunt so it can be can it be formed from glycolysis no gluconeogenesis is for the synthesis of glucose urea cycle has got nothing to do with nucleic acid citric acid cycle also does not uh, is not required so the carbohydrate is ribose 5 phosphate and it is made in the pentose phosphate pathway look at the question the carbohydrate employed so that is ribose 5 phosphate is made where in which pathway pentose phosphate path let us go to the next question which of the following stimulates gluconeogenesis you have got the questions high acetyl coa high citrate levels high glucose levels low atp levels low lactate levels so what stimulates gluconeogenesis high acetyl coa why is this stimulate gluconeogenesis remember acetyl coa is the stimulator of pyruvate carboxylase so whenever fatty acid lipolysis is taking place by hormone sensitive lipase there is increased fatty uh, fatty acids are released and these fatty acid reach the liver and these fatty acids undergo beta oxidation to release acetyl coa when is this all happening this is happening during starvation and that is where we need to produce glucose gluconeogenesis has to take place so that is when high acetyl coa is a stimulator of pyruvate carboxylase so what pyruvate will be converted to oxaloacetate and this will get converted to gluconeogenic pathway it will give direction for the pyruvate to enter into the gluconeogenic pathway what about high citrate levels no the citrate levels are usually increased when the at when the atp levels are more in the this when it is a citrate is an intermediate of the tca cycle so minute we say high citrate it means that oxaloacetate is being converted to citrate by combining with acetyl coa so that also will not uh, take place that means tca cycle is occurring will tca cycle stimulate gluconeogenesis no it won't because tca cycle should stop and that is when gluconeogenesis is going to take place high glucose level naturally when glucose level is more then gluconeogenesis need not take place so we have insulin and insulin is going to inhibit all the gluconeogenic enzymes low atp levels again it is not an indicator it may it may stimulate to some extent but for gluconeogenesis we need atp and for this atp is got from beta oxidation especially during starvation low lactate levels lactate levels also do not stimulate gluconeogenesis it is the high lactate whenever there is more production of uh, more production of lactate this lactate from the muscle will go to the liver and it will stimulate gluconeogenesis so low lactate levels is the wrong answer the out of all this it is the high acetyl coa levels let us go to the next question in erythrocytes the enzyme of glycolysis 
responsible for the production of ATP is so we are looking at the different enzymes glucokinase P phosphofructokinase pyruvate kinase glycerolase 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and aldolase what is the right answer pyruvate kinase from where did it come you just because you think they are all regulatory enzyme does it not produce ATP Phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate is a substrate level phosphorylation. So this is a quite a tricky question because all these kinases you think are utilizing ATP. This glucokinase and PFK do utilize ATP. They do not produce but pyruvate kinase produces. If you have answered glycerol D3 phosphate dehydrogenase, please remember yes it produces ATP but not at the substrate level. This NADH has to go to the go to the mitochondria and produce ATP and look at the question in erythrocytes in erythrocyte is there any mitochondria there is no mitochondria so oxidative phosphorylation will not take place this is purely and purely substrate level phosphorylation which is responsible for the production of ATP in the erythrocytes so the only reaction enzyme which is taking place is pyruvate kinase for, for substrate level phosphorylation. Aldolase is anyway not involved in the energy production. Let us go to the next question. Lactate dehydrogenase catalyzes the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, utilizes ATP, is a dimer, requires niacin derived coenzyme for its action, belongs to class 2 transferases. What was your answer? None of these look this as a good choice. So what is your the right choice in this? Requires niacin derived coenzyme for its action. Which is that niacin derived coenzyme? NAD. NAD plus or NADH is required for its action. What catalyzes the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA? Pyruvate dehydrogenase. Utilizes ATP? No, it is lactate dehydrogenase. It is not a kinase or a synthetase or a synthase, so it does not require ATP. Is a dimer. Now again this, remember creatine kinase is a dimer, whereas lactate uh, dehydrogenase is a tetramer. Belongs to class 2 transferases. What is class 2? Class 2 transferases enzyme classification. Class 2 are responsible for transferring a group. Here what is been transferred? What are these niacin derived coenzyme NAD, NADH? They all belong to dehydrogenases, belong to oxidoreductases. Here also there is a transfer of proton from one substrate to another uh, substrate. But proton change is known as oxidoreductation. So they belong, all the dehydrogenases belong to the class 1 oxidoreductases. Let us go to the next question. All of the following statements are true regarding glycogen synthesis except it is increased by insulin, it takes place in the mitochondria, it takes place in the hepatocytes, it is regulated by intracellular cyclic AMP levels, it is increased in the well-fed state. So what is your answer? Shall we see the answer? All are true except it takes place in the mitochondria. So where is glycogen synthesis taking place? It is taking place in the cytosol. Is it increased by insulin? Yes. In the well-fed state, the body wants to store whatever extra glucose is there as glycogen. So it is glycogen synthesis is increased by insulin. It takes place in the hepatocytes. Yes, it takes place in the hepatocytes and the muscle cells. Both the liver and the muscles are the site for glycogen synthesis. It is regulated by intracellular cyclic AMP levels. Yes, because the whole thing depends upon the two enzymes, glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase. And both these are regulated, uh, reciprocally regulated, glycogen synthesis and glycogen degradation. It is all depending on the intracellular cyclic AMP levels, especially glucagon. Glucagon, it, glucagon increases the cyclic AMP level and causes phosphorylation of the enzyme when it is when glucagon is more but it is mainly regulated by the intracellular cyclic AMP levels if cyclic AMP is more glycogen synthesis actually decreases now they have not asked that here they have just said whether it is regulated yes it is regulated it is increased in the well-fed state yes it is increased in the 
well fed state because in a well fed state more glucose more glucose more insulin more insulin more uh, glycogen synthesis is taking place glycogen synthesis is active in the dephosphorylated form because insulin always dephosphorylates and in this, this enzyme is uh, needed during well fed state to store extra glucose the regulatory enzyme of glycogenolysis is t branching enzyme branching enzyme glycogen phosphorylase phosphoglucomutase glucose 6 phosphatase so what is the right answer the right answer is glycogen phosphorylase so what are, are these other enzymes involved in glycogenolysis yes the d branching is enzyme is responsible for producing is actually a part of glycogen uh, glycogenolysis it pre decreases the branches whatever wherever there are branches the debranching enzyme will see to that uh, the branches are removed because uh, glycogen phosphorylase cannot act on the alpha 1 6 linkage so when it is four units away it will remove the three unit of uh, uh, glyco of glucose units and transfers it so it is a debranching enzyme is not the regulatory branching enzyme is of glycogenesis so it is not a regulatory enzyme Glycogen, of phosph glycogen phosphorylase is one the one which is regulated by covalent modification. Phosphoglucomutase, is it involved in glycogenolysis? Yes, it converts whatever glucose is released by glycogen phosphorylase is released as glucose 1-phosphate and this has to be converted to glucose 6-phosphate and this is done by phosphoglucomutase. What about glucose 6-phosphatase? This enzyme is present only in the liver cells, only in the liver endoplasmic reticulum and there it converts glucose 6-phosphatase, it converts glucose 6-phosphate to release free glucose which goes into the blood and it is responsible for maintaining the blood glucose levels. So with this we come to the end of MCQ part 1, 20 questions are over. Thank you.